the greatest maritime mystery of all time has finally been solved. The San Jose Spanish Galleon was believed to be lost forever, but it was discovered off the coast of Colombia in 2015 thanks to a high-tech robotic sub. This is the holy grail of shipwrecks because the sunken treasure is believed to be worth a staggering $22 billion. The San Jose's cargo of gold, silver, jewels, and emeralds made it a prime target for pirates and the British Navy. Jack Sparrow would be in heaven if he managed to get his hands on this lavish loot. Here's how the San Jose shipwreck was finally found. The San Jose sunken treasure makes the Titanic's Hope Diamond look like costume jewelry. The discovery of the San Jose Spanish Galleon off the coast of Colombia in 2015 created a fervor among archaeologists and historians. It was truly a once-in-a-lifetime find. All other shipwrecks pale in comparison. The astronomical value of this sunken treasure discovered would make even Jeff Bezos turn his head. The knowledge gained from this find is vast, but it's the treasure that has everyone talking. The the enormous collection of jewels, emeralds, gold, and silver is being eyed by politicians and explorers around the world. They're looking at the San Jose sunken treasure like Sam Moog looks at his mountain of gold. There is a battle going on behind the scenes to determine who owns this extremely valuable treasure, and it might not end anytime soon. The exact location of the San Jose shipwreck is being closely guarded by the Colombian government. After all, they wouldn't want some modern-day pirates swooping in and pilfering the prize. The captain of the San Jose, Jose Fernandez de Santillan, had no easy task ahead of him when King Philip V of Spain ordered him to haul the ship's precious cargo from South America all the way to Spain. It was an extremely arduous task filled with peril and danger. There were pirates sailing the seas, and the British Navy was closing in fast. Pirates managed to sink more than 1,000 Spanish ships off the coast of Colombia during Spain's 300-year rule, but it was the British Navy that caused the San Jose Galleon to sink to its watery grave. King Philip V put a rush order on the loot. He wanted it ASAP, and he planned to use the gold, silver, and precious stones to fund the War of the Spanish Succession. The San Jose set sail from Portobello, Panama in May of 1708, but the journey did not go as planned. The ship was only supposed to make a quick stop in Cartagena, Colombia before heading to Spain, but then things took a turn for the worse. The British were coming, and the San Jose was in deep, deep trouble. To say things ended badly for the San Jose would be an understatement. De Santillan suspected that the British might be near Cartagena and waiting to stage an ambush, but he pushed forward anyway. If there was an award for most incompetent captain, De Santillan would probably win the award. It was a huge miscalculation, and the British made short work of the San Jose. The battle started late in the afternoon on June 8, 1708, and by the time nightfall came, the ship was already underwater. The British fired their cannons relentlessly, the San Jose burst into flames, and the explosion was heard miles away. Only 11 of the San Jose's 600 crew members survived the attack, and 11 million gold and silver coins sank to the ocean floor. The San Jose only made it 25 kilometers off the coast of Cartagena, and likely went down somewhere around Isla Baru. The San Jose sat beneath the sea off the coast of Colombia for over 300 years, and it's still there to this day. However, it's no longer a mystery. The shipwreck was officially discovered on November 27, 2015, thanks to a lot of research and some high-tech deep-sea equipment. We say officially discovered because the wreck may have been first discovered in the early 1980s. More on that later. The discovery wouldn't have been possible without the Remus 6000 robotic submarine. The Autonomous Underwater Vehicle, or AUV, was operated by the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Thanks to sonar and plenty of pictures, the AUV turned up some incredible results. Researchers knew they had something when the AUV snapped photos of bronze cannons adorned with dolphins, a surefire sign that what they discovered was indeed the San Jose shipwreck. The shipwreck is believed to be 1,000 feet below the surface somewhere near the Rosario Islands. The Tropical Island Archipelago and National Park is about 40 kilometers from Cartagena. So if you plan to swoop in and try to steal the treasure for yourself, that's where you should start. The San Jose Shipwreck Discovery Mission was a joint operation between Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, the Colombian Navy, and the Colombian Institute of Anthropology and History. The importance of this discovery cannot be understated, and scientists and 
historians will likely be studying the shipwreck for many more lifetimes. The true location of the San Jose shipwreck baffled researchers and scientists for years, and treasure hunters were desperately searching for the pricey sunken treasure for decades. Former Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos called it one of the biggest findings and identifications of underwater heritage in the history of humanity. If it wasn't for technology, the San Jose shipwreck might still be a mystery. The Remus 6000 autonomous underwater vehicle was instrumental in identifying the San Jose shipwreck, and the exact location of the underwater Holy Grail would still be up for debate if not for the Remus 6000. Only a robot could have precisely identified the San Jose. Deep sea divers simply couldn't have pulled off this mission because humans can't stay underwater for 22 hours. The $5 million AUV is truly a state-of-the-art piece of scientific equipment. The machine's titanium spine allows it to withstand deep sea pressure, and its long-range sonar system allows it to easily scan the ocean floor. The San Jose isn't the only mystery that the Remus 6000 has solved. The USS Indianapolis was discovered in the Philippine Sea in 2017 thanks to the Remus 6000 AUV. The Remus 6000 weighs 1,900 pounds and stretches 12.6 feet from tip to stern. It's a peppy machine with a direct-drive DC brushless motor and and open two-bladed propeller that allows it to travel at speeds of up to five knots. Finding a shipwreck is no easy task, and it's easy to get lost trying to find sunken treasure. Treasure hunters have become shipwrecks themselves on more than one occasion. Thankfully, the Remus 6000 doesn't have to worry about becoming lost at sea. The AUV is equipped with a launch and recovery system, which makes search missions a breeze. The surface communications and positions technology allows operators to keep tabs on the AUV at all times. If there is ever a malfunction and operators lose contact, there is the recovery strobe and emergency relocation system, which will help operators locate the AUV. Discovering shipwrecks can be extremely dangerous, so it's best to leave the work up to robots. The Remus 6000 has applications far beyond just finding sunken treasure. It has been used by scientists in the fields of marine biology, physical oceanography, environmental monitoring, and geological investigation. It's a useful scientific tool, but AUVs have commercial and defense applications too. The AUV market is expected to be worth as much as $2.3 billion over the next decade. So who exactly owns the $22 billion sunken treasure. Since it was discovered off the coast of Colombia, you would think that it belongs to the Colombian government, but it might not be that simple. Way back in the 1980s, Colombia's Dirección General Maritima authorized the Glacamora Company to search for the San Jose shipwreck off the coast of Cartagena. In 1981, the Glacamora Company claimed to have found the wreckage and cut a deal with salvage company Sea Search Armada to recover the sunken treasure. Glacamora Company agreed to give the Colombian government 35% of the recovered treasure treasure. Mystery solved, right? Wrong. The Colombian government refused to sign a written contract and would not give permission to Sea Search Armada to begin the salvage operation. The Colombian government even claimed that the site of the wreckage was not accurate and later went on to pass a law giving Colombia all rights to treasure recovered off its coast. The new law would entitle Sea Search Armada to a 5% finder's fee for locating the wreckage. On top of that, the finder's fee would be taxed at a whopping 45%. That means that Sea Search Armada would get about $302.5 million based on current currency valuations. Sure, that's a lot of money, but it's a far cry from $22 billion. The legal battle raged on for decades. Sea Search Armada first sued the Colombian government in Colombian court in 1989, and then the Sea Search Armada sued the Colombian government in U.S. courts. Not once, but twice. In 2007, the Supreme Court of Colombia concluded that any treasure recovered would be split equally between the Colombian government and the explorers. If you thought that was the end of it, you would be wrong. To complicate matters even further, Spain has called for UNESCO to get involved and oversee the San Jose site. Colombia? Spain? USA? The question of who owns the rights to the $22 billion sunken treasure may never be solved. When the Colombian government announced the San Jose was discovered in 2015, there was no mention of the precious discovery in the late 1980s. We might never know if what Glacamora Company found in 1981 was actually the San Jose shipwreck. The San Jose shipwreck is no longer a mystery, but but it might be quite some time until gold coins and beautiful jewels are salvaged. Only the fish will get to enjoy that lavish loot for now. In 2019, the Colombian government was on the verge of signing a deal with a private company to salvage the shipwreck, but the deal fell through. 
There is still a lot of red tape to cut through, and whoever actually salvages the wreck may be entitled to as much as 45% of the $22 billion fortune. Naturally, the Colombian government wants to keep as much of the pie as possible. The eventual goal is to open a San Jose Spanish Galleon Museum in Cartagena. So perhaps one day we might be able to see all that gold up close. Here's that everything gets sorted out. Would visiting the Cartagena Museum be on your bucket list? That's it, folks. Are you excited to see the San Jose sunken treasure brought to the surface? What would you buy if you found a $22 billion bounty of precious metals and jewels under the sea? Who do you think should get to keep the treasure? Has this video inspired you to head to the beach and look for some treasure of your own? Are you as fascinated by shipwrecks as we are? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.